Hey everybody, this is Mr. Portnick for AP Calculus AB. We are in unit two, differentiation, the definition and basic derivative rules. Today's focus is topic 2.4, connecting differentiability and continuity, determining when derivatives do and do not exist. Enjoy. All right, for section 2.4, differentiability and continuity, let's start with an exercise. A graph of a function is shown below. So here's our graph. Write down its equation on line number one. So let's pause there. Take a moment. What does the equation look like? And if you need to, you can pause the, pause the video uh, and answer that question for yourself. Um, most of you, what I would expect, would say that this looks like y equals 2x plus 1. So y equals 2x plus 1. Why would we say that? Well, we see that there's a y-intercept of 1, and we see it's going up 2, right 1, so that's got a slope of 2. But... For those of you who are uh, very sort of aware of graphs, you might notice that there's not really a scale drawn on here, right? We've got these tick marks, but we don't necessarily know from this uh, what, you know, what those values are. How would this change if I told you that this up here was 0 0.003, this was 0 0.003, and this was negative 0 0.003? Take a moment. How would that change your equation here? Write that now in line two. What's the equation of this line? If you need to pause, feel free to do that for the video. All right, well, in this case, we see that our y-intercept here would have to be at 0 0.001. So it's going to definitely have that. And the slope looks like it's going maybe up, uh, up two and right one again. So this uh, is going to be 0.002x plus 0 0.001, since that's the distance it went up and then to the right one uh, for that. Well, what if I told you that that's actually not the equation of this line either? Let's check this out on the calculator uh, and we can see for this particular function what we're seeing here. All right, so we can see our graph here on our graphing calculator. Um, as we can, so it said before, each of these tick marks represents 0 0.001. Um, and so we had an idea that maybe this is the function y equals 0 0.002x plus 0 0.001. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to hit the zoom button on my calculator. I'm going to zoom out and I'm going to hit enter. And I'm going to zoom out from this point And let's see what it looks like. Oh, it still looks like a straight line. Okay, so maybe that's uh, what we're talking about. Let's zoom out again. Still looks like a straight line. I'm going to zoom out again. Still looks like a straight line, and uh, for that matter, it looks almost like it's going through the origin here because we've zoomed out so far, but we know that it's going through 0 0.001 as that y-intercept. Let me zoom out again. Oh, wow. What is this? Looks like we have a little bit of curvature here and a little bit of curvature here. And we were looking at that part here, which was a little bit, which was the flat part. But if I zoom out one more time, oh, we can see that this is actually a sine wave, right? One of our uh, trigonometric functions, this looks a lot like the graph of sine of x. Maybe it's been shifted a little bit. Um, and that's actually really interesting because what we were, could see was that when we zoomed in really, really close to that point when x is equal to zero, we could, uh, the line looked straight, even though this is a totally curved graph, or it's a totally curved sine wave. And so what we refer to this as uh, is what we call locally linear. So I'm gonna zoom back in. If we zoom back in on this point a few times, we can see that even if it's curved, like it was, no matter what, sort of where we pick, uh, we, if we zoom in enough times, the line is going to actually look straight. And so that means that it is locally linear. It is locally looking like a straight line. And we can sort of see just, just from looking at uh, each of these lines, the more you zoom in, the straighter this line gets, right? I'm just zooming in at this exact point over and over and over again. And if we go to our y equals, I can sort of give away what this actual equation was. Um, I think this is the where we started off of what this graph looked like, but the equation for this is in fact a sine function. It's the equation sine of 2x, closing the parentheses, plus 0 0.001. 
So being locally linear is sort of an interesting concept that if you take a curve and if you zoom in close enough to it, any curve that is uh, continuous is going to look straight. Um, assuming that it's what we refer to as differentiable, which we're going to talk about next. All right, so it turns out that that graph that we actually saw before was sine of 2x plus 0 0.001. Uh, and so we thought from the zoomed in version of it that this was just 2x plus 1 because we didn't have scale. And then we saw the tick marks and we thought it was this, but that was actually a curve. It was actually a sine curve, which is sort of interesting to think about that if you are very zoomed in on a graph, you know, maybe you're not seeing uh, the curvature that might occur in a graph. In fact, any, uh, any function that we have, if you zoom in enough, it's going to look like a straight line, which is an important idea to think about. Uh, differentiability. So the derivative exists for each point in the domain. So if it's a function and there's a domain, there's going to be a derivative for it. The graph must be a smooth line or curve for the function to exist or for the derivative to exist. In other words, the graph looks like a line if you zoom in. So just as we saw before here, even though we know that sine of 2x is that sine curve that goes on forever and ever and it's curved, if you zoom in enough, it's going to look like a straight line like we've got right here, which is what we call local linearity. It's locally linear. It's locally a straight line. If you zoom in far enough, it's going to be a straight line. So the derivative is going to fail to exist in sort of three cases. Three cases where uh, a derivative is not going to exist. What's the first one? Well, generally a discontinuity. So last chapter we talked about all these different types of discontinuities. What are, what are the ones we want to talk about? Well, so the first one, uh, you know, would be uh, like a removable discontinuity, right? If we had something like this, uh, that would be, you know, a hole in our graph. That would be our discontinuity. Uh, or we could have, you know, maybe a jump or step discontinuity. So we could have something that looks like this. So that would be our jump slash step. Or we might have our last type of discontinuity, which is a vertical asymptote. So you might have something like this, where it is discontinuous at uh, the x value where that asymptote is. So if there's a discontinuity, we're going to say that there's no derivative at the point of that discontinuity. So there'd be no derivative where that hole is, that removable discontinuity. There'd be no derivative uh, where this jump step, whatever that x value is, where that occurs. And there'd be no derivative where a vertical asymptote is occurring. Okay, what's another case where we might have uh, a derivative not existing? Um, that's, we're going to refer to it as a corner or a cusp. A corner or a cusp is our second type of place where a derivative would fail to exist. A classic example of a, a cusp would be actually like an absolute value function. We know it has sort of like that V shape where it's got that hard corner that's going to be like at that point. At that particular point, we're going to refer to that as a cusp. Um, and we can't take the derivative of it because if actually if we think about zooming in on this particular point, right, where that, that the two parts of the absolute value function meet, if you zoom in and you zoom in and you zoom in, unlike this example that we had up here, where if you zoomed in, it's going to become a straight line, you can zoom in on the, the point of that absolute value as much as you want and it's going to always look like a point. It is not locally linear. And so because of that, the derivative fails to exist. Uh, at a corner or a cusp. And ex another example of a type of graph uh, where, where, where it would look like that would be something like this. You know, sometimes you actually have functions that sort of like make this like little V pointy thing, sort of like this, almost like a, uh, it's like a bird. It's like a bird flapping its wings or something like that. But it's, if you look at that uh, particular point, it's got this sort of like hard V shape uh, that you could zoom in and it's, it's never gonna straighten out. So it's not locally linear. Um, what about our third case? And this is the final one. Um, generally what we refer to as a vertical tangent line. So a vertical tangent line. So sometimes we have functions that are just vertical at a given point. So for example, you know, I might have a function that looks like this. So 
at this particular point, at least if I had drawn it you know, correctly, we can sort of see if we drew a tangent line that the tangent line here is almost is almost vertical or you know we could have a, a function where the tangent line is vertical and since we know that the derivative is the slope of the tangent line right we know the derivative is the slope of the tangent line the slope here would be infinite right the slope is actually like undefined so since the slope is undefined that means the derivative is undefined as well and this is a case where the derivative would fail to exist uh, on that type of function. So three different cases, discontinuities in general, corners or cusps, and vertical tangent lines. Great. Next, we want to identify points where the function below is not continuous and or not differentiable. Well, let's jump, let's do this uh, here. I'm seeing a couple things. Looking at this graph, I'm seeing something happening right here. I'm seeing ha something happening right here, right here, and right there. At x equals negative 3, we see that that function is not continuous. It is not continuous. Why is it not continuous? To me, it looks like there's a hole. And as we had said before, when it's not continuous, that means it's also not differentiable. That's one of our things we set up here. If it is, if the derivative will fail to exist if there's a discontinuity. All right, what about our second one? Right here, we see that sort of hard V shape. This looks like a corner or a cusp, depending upon what you want to call it. And so at x equals negative 2, it is continuous, right? It is continuous there, but it's not differentiable. And the reason for that is a corner. Okay, what about at x equals 2? Well, same thing. It is continuous. I could draw it without lifting up my pencil. Follow, uh, it follows all three of our rules for continu continuity, but it is not differentiable there because it's got a corner or a cusp. So x equals 2 is continuous, but not differentiable because of a corner. Last one, we got x equals 4. Well, this is not continuous. It is a step or jump discontinuity. So at x equals 4, it is not continuous due to step or jump. And so since it's not continuous, it's also not differentiable. All right. So those are the four places where there's sort of problems with this graph. The graph is not continuous and or not differentiable. We're going to end uh, with two true or false statements. Let's see what's true, what's false. True or false, differentiability implies continuity. If something is differentiable, does that mean that it has to be continuous? Well, if it's differentiable, it has to be continuous because we saw places where it's discontinuous, it's not differentiable. So differentiability implies continuity. That is a true statement. If something is differentiable, it must be continuous. Then the next question, continuity implies differentiability. Continuity implies differentiability. If a function is continuous, does that mean it's differentiable? Well, we saw an example here at like x equals negative 2 and 2. These are continuous, but it's not differentiable because there's a cusp or a corner. So this is a false statement. In general, uh, that is not true. Again, a corner would be an example of this. Corner or cusp would be an example where it's continuous, but it's not differentiable at that particular point. Um, this sort of leads me into thinking a little bit about uh, if-then statements. Very frequently, we write uh, these two things as if-then statements. So useful things to know, if a function is differentiable, then it is continuous. So if a function is differentiable, then it is continuous. We can take a similar statement to this by adding some nots and reversing it, which is what's actually referred to as a contrapositive 
if you're talking about logical statements. It's a contrapositive. So what's the contrapositive of this? It says if a function is not continuous, then it is not differentiable. Also an if-then statement, like we just sort of saw, if a function is not continuous, then it is not differentiable. Both of these are true statements uh, that, you know, they essentially mean the same thing. Contrapositives are equivalent logically, but uh, useful for us to be thinking about, you know, if, if this is true, then something else is true. If this is not true, then something else is not true. Um, but that's it for today's notes. We've got some practice for you to try. Uh, check it out, check your answers, do that test prep, and then try out our mastery check for today. Have a great rest of your day and good luck.